The concept of memes was first proposed by Richard Dawkins in a book called The Selfish Gene. Dawkins, a biologist, stated that even if the actions of a living thing appear to be altruistic, each of its genes is still engaging in selfish behavior, purely as a matter of survival. He went on to define memes as a different kind of self-replicating unit. We are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. If I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I'd choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion. So in 2017, I started this YouTube channel as like a left-leaning, progressive atheist channel. And most of my videos revolved around criticizing religion mainly, right? And in this period, I was actually still going for my education. I was doing my master's degree in international relations. And something I'll always be grateful for is to myself for doing that because I've always loved history. I've always loved the history of religion. And because I loved history, it really made me view all religion in a certain way. But thankfully, from doing a political science master's degree, I got the economic theory and just general political theory to understand the world a little better. And this is something that has lacked from the atheist movement pretty much its entire existence. The only one you would say prominent atheist who had this understanding was probably Christopher Hitchens, but even he wasn't amazing at this stuff when it came to certain issues. And to the issue of today's video, when it came to Islam, he wasn't particularly amazing at putting political theory under his criticism and skepticism of religion. And I've made a lot of videos on this recently. Now, new atheists or former atheist talking heads, they're replacing their criticism of religion by actually promoting Western chauvinism and Richard Dawkins even saying he's a cultural Christian. Other new atheists converting to Christianity because they want to be Western chauvinists and it's like the newest griff for them. But today, I wanted to talk about this. Why are the new atheists now cozying up with Christians and actually saying they are Christian and Christianity is actually a good religion. Not like bad Islam, Christianity is good. Which I find just so laughable to, you know, take Britain, which is a very secular country. Most people probably don't believe in God in my opinion here. Most people aren't really that religious, even if they say they're Christian, for example. And our politics is really not influenced by religion at all. So in that, you grow up in England, you see the nice churches, you're someone like Richard Dawkins who says Christianity is actually a decent religion. It's a decent religion because no one believes in it and it doesn't really have any power beyond old traditions in our politics like the House of Lords giving the Church of England power or the monarchy. You only have to look across the ocean to Ireland to see a country that was ravaged by the Christian faith and Catholicism doing terrible things to it and also protestantism doing terrible things to the people of ireland and we're going to look at some clips from dawkins today talking about christianity now he seems to have a change of heart on his atheism the main point is why all these atheists now love christianity all of a sudden is because they're racist against muslims and they're all western chauvinists and i would probably describe a lot of them as woke fascists and if you follow their thought process through you get what's happening to palestine today and people like Sam Harris actually support Israel. This is a person who's meant to be a prominent atheist thinker who supports a country which for the last like 20 years has been led by someone in bed with the religious far right in Israel doing terrible things to another group of people, not just based on religion, but often using religion to justify it. And these are meant to be our atheist thinkers, which makes me sad actually, because I'm still an atheist. I still think religion is generally a bad thing and it's used as a tool for control and makes people often act against their own interests. So I wish it didn't really exist to be honest, but at the same time, you have to recognize that geopolitics, economics, poverty and freedom all contribute to how conservative a society is in regards to religion. And if you happen to look at some of the most poor countries in the world, they also have massive Muslim populations and also they often live under pretty harsh governments as well. Not exactly the environment to contribute to the freedom of information, freedom of discussion, and moving away from conservative religion like we thankfully have in countries like Britain. So we're going to be talking about Richard Dawkins' new atheism and the lack of political understanding of people who like Dawkins, Harris, all these other people. And I wanna give some context with my own relationship with religion 
and Christianity and Islam and all that stuff before talking about Dawkins comments on Christianity which I find really bizarre as someone who's meant to be an atheist. So I was born and raised in London. Catholicism is a minority religion. In the UK I went to Catholic school. Most people who went there were either immigrants or descended from immigrants. Irish, Polish, Indian, Nigerian, Ghanaian, lots of different countries, Filipino, and you had like that melting pot in the school. And also because it was in London and I went to a mixed Catholic school, had a pretty good experience to be honest. And religion wasn't really forced down our throat too much besides saying like some prayers in class in primary school and sometimes going to mass on special occasions in secondary school. I was actually an altar server in my Catholic school's church until I was like 15, I had to hard quit because I hated doing it. Uh, my parents basically forced me into that. In my own experience, I never found Catholicism that oppressive. And also, the first time I saw Richard Dawkins was in a religion class in my Catholic secondary school, right? So it really wasn't a place where I got a negative experience of Christianity because it really wasn't pushed on me too much. And I became an atheist when I was like 16 and it just felt like a natural progression. And I'm sure a lot of people who went to Catholic school like mine in England or maybe America, you probably have a similar experience. And I can safely say, I don't know anyone I went to school with who actually goes to church or even believes in it, to be honest. But we all had this experience where we didn't really care. And then you live in a place like London, you see all the amazing architecture, sometimes religious. And isn't that nice? You can hear church bells sometimes. I know there's a church near me hear church bells at very weird times, but sometimes it's nice to wake up and you hear the church bells. So Richard Dawkins probably had a similar experience to me in that you grow up in a secular country. The only sides of the religion you really see aesthetically are like nice cathedrals, nice buildings, maybe some church bells. And the religion is not oppressive in any way in our lives. And for most of us, especially straight people through the decades, growing up in the UK in a religious country has not been really a negative thing. Because despite our head of state being the head of a religion, this is a very, very secular country. If you start talking like an American evangelical, I'd say like 90% of the country would think you're super weird. And like Dawkins, I'm someone who likes a good church. When I went around to Southeast Asia and East Asia, I was getting loads of photos of the Korean churches, of the Vietnamese churches. I thought they were really cool. And as someone who loves religious history and architecture and stuff, I lived in Southern Spain. I went to Granada. I went to Seville. What has influenced them a lot? Islam and Arab and Berber architects over the centuries. And even, I didn't even know this, in Seville, the palace, well, it was a leftover palace that the Muslims like left behind. It was actually constructed by Muslims, but the Christians paid them to do it. And it's like such a massive tourist attraction. And even in a lot of Spanish cathedrals and churches, you can see they built it on top of like an old mosque and stuff. And when I stayed in Phuket in Thailand, you hear the call to prayer from the mosque and stuff. And it's not something like really aggressive and intrusive as Richard Dawkins has recently said, it's something that is just kind of interesting. And also like, I, I personally like it. And then I play games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Assassin's Creed Mirage, where you get to see like the medieval Christian and Islamic architecture. And it's just cool to see those contrasts because I love history. I like both of them. And just because I was raised in the UK doesn't mean I think everything to do with Islam is inherently violent and oppressive which a lot of atheists seem to do because they don't really understand history, that at different times in history, Islamic societies were the more tolerant ones and Christian ones weren't. And maybe there's something to do with economic prosperity and different trains of thoughts at different times in history, which makes certain societies different ways. I know atheists can't really think like that. They just think Islam bad and Christianity less bad, but yes, that's the way you should think about it. In regards to the recent controversy, so Dawkins, I remember, tweeted this a couple of years ago in 2018. He wrote, Listening to the lovely bells of Winchester, one of the great medieval cathedrals, so much nicer than the aggressive sounding Alu Akbar, or is that just my cultural upbringing? Now, I don't know how he's comparing chants of Alu Akbar to like church bells. Did he mean the call to prayer? Because if he did, then again, it's just racism then if you're saying like, oh my God, this is nice. Everything to do with other religions is bad and aggressive. Again, like aggressive sounding. And people at the time were defending him saying, how can it be racist? Uh, Islam's not a race, which is the common cop out new atheists use, right? But at the same time, aggressive sounding Alu Akbar, he knows what he's doing. He knows the connotation of that phrase more recently. And it's to do with Islamic insurgents, right? Richard Dawkins had an interview on LBC 
Would you believe it with Boris Johnson's sister, because the British press is absolutely terrible, in that she was actually a journalist when he was Prime Minister. Boris Johnson used to be a journalist, then he wrote like columns for newspapers. After he was Prime Minister, I could make a whole video about the state of British journalism. But anyway, he goes on this radio show and he talks about him being a cultural Christian. So uh, the king of the atheists is now a cultural Christian. So let's listen to this and then listen to him talk about how Christianity is a decent religion and Islam is bad because uh, it treats women bad. Well, I must say I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we Certainly, if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. Well, which brings um, me to, to my supplementary point, which is that, as we know, church attendance is plummeting, but the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction, and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Yes, I do, really. I mean, I, 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 I don't... I, I just choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. I think you're going to have to explain why you say that, Professor Dawkins. Why is Islam profundly, well, the, the pro way, the fundamentally way, the, not decent like Christianity? Yes, I mean, the, 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 the way women are treated, I mean, Christianity is not great about that. For it. uh, it's had its problems with female vicars and female bishops and things. But there's an active hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the holy books of Islam. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are, are quite, quite different. But the, but the doctrines of Islam, the Hadith and the, and the Quran, is fundamentally um, hostile to women, hostile to gays, um, and uh, I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. So what is Dawkins fundamentally saying there is that he's a Western chauvinist, right? Because the building of mosques is a problem because Islam is not a good religion, treats women and gays badly. And I find this very weird coming from an atheist because he probably knows Christians also do that because their religions come from the exact same place. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are all the same on a multitude of things because they all revere the same holy figures. They just have different spins on it. Like, yes, the Bible is very homophobic too. The Torah is very homophobic because Abrahamic religion is inherently anti-woman and anti-gay. Like, that is something they all have in common, right? So for him to say that Islam just has a problem with women and not Christianity is pretty laughable because, again, these people don't have good understanding of political development, economics and stuff. They just think Britain has allowed to become secular because Christianity, like, just let them one day. Not that people in Christian countries have had to fight to get their rights back from the church. You weren't even allowed to write the Bible in English, by the way, for a long, long time. A guy called John Wycliffe was the first guy to try and do this so the masses could actually read the Bible because back in medieval England, only the elite and the church and people who could read Latin and Greek, they were the only ones allowed to. I wonder why. So they could manipulate people and not allow them to see the parts of the Bible that actually questioned like 
feudalism, right? So for him to come out and say this is laughable because this is why atheists get so confused. They just see the world in 2024. They see England versus Saudi Arabia. And they're like, I know what religion I would choose. So what they're taking is like the most extreme form in one country versus a very, very secular country. But they'll also apply that to like many other Muslim countries and say, well, see, they treat women like X. They treat LGBT people like X. Therefore, Islam is irredeemable. And it's really in the core message of Islam. And that's the reason it's so bad. Christian countries are better for this because Christianity is fundamentally decent, as Dawkins outlines, while Islam is fundamentally backwards. While I would argue it's all about political and societal factors. So think about Saudi Arabia, for example, right? That dictatorship is propped up by all these secular Western countries. So for Saudis who want reform of their political system, they can't do this because they're facing a government that is armed and funded by the West and does subscribe to a very conservative form of Islam. If apparently we hated that so bad, why do we give them so many weapons? Why do we allow them to be a major player on the world stage? Because of capitalism. That's why we love the Saudis, because they have so much oil, and now they have so much money to throw around at everything, so we tolerate that. And even in countries that aren't as conservative with their religion, like Egypt, for example, we've backed their dictatorships for years and years, so when people in the population, Egyptians generally, who are more secular than Saudis, can't improve their situation because they have a military dictatorship backed by the secular West. So how can they fight that, right? And a lot of the North African countries are more secular than the Gulf ones. But we don't even talk about the differences. Like Egypt is different to Qatar or Saudi Arabia. Morocco is different. Not all of these countries are trying to obey something like Sharia law. But also when they talk about Islam, they're very much thinking just of North Africans, Arabs, and also like maybe Bangladeshi and Pakistani people, right? They're very much not thinking about Thai Muslims or Muslims in Southeast Asia because they've racialized Islam. So that's why they see it as a bad thing, but also they don't realize that poverty, dictatorships, all of these things contribute to a climate which allows conservative religion to flourish, just like conservative religion flourished in England for centuries and centuries because we had essentially a dictatorship of the monarchy where eventually the monarch became the head of the religion and suppressed all dissent. And this is the same religion Dawkins are talking about as being fundamentally decent. Read about the Crusades. Read about the French wars of religion. Read about the colonization of the new world and what priests did to native people. Read about the slavery of West Africans and how they justified it. The papacy literally said it was a religious act to enslave African people and force convert them to Christianity. Go to an Inquisition museum in Spain and look at all their interrogation devices before you start telling me that Christianity is a fundamentally decent religion. To anyone with half a brain, you know that religions reflect their society and in today's world reflect like socio economics and that's why how much people believe in islam throughout the world is different based on these values as well and also it's just hypocritical for western former christian countries to say oh my god muslims you're so backwards but here you go saudi arabia here's billions in investment and just untold amounts of weapons so you can stay in power forever and actually keep promoting this very conservative version of islam around the world, we don't have much of a problem with that actually. But back home we're so moral, we're so secular, Christianity is fundamentally decent, apart from we'll just arm all the terrible places in the world, we'll just arm the Saudis, we'll arm the Israelis, we'll arm actual people doing terrible things in the name of religion and then pretend that we're better than them. So on this last segment of the video, um, I found this article by Ian Hersey Ali who was an ex-Muslim atheist that you'd see in a lot of these conversations. Like, you know, here is our token ex-Muslim who will come out and agree with all the new atheist right-wing talking points. And she recently says she's converted to Christianity. And her reasoning for this is very interesting and plays into what I've been saying. So um, let's get into some of her article on Unheard. Why do I call myself a Christian now? Part of the answer is global. Western civilization is under threat from the three different but related forces, the resurgence of great power authoritarianism, and expansionism in the forms of the Chinese Communist Party and Putin's Russia, the rise of global Islam, which threatens to mobilize a vast population against the West, 
and the viral spread of woke ideology, which is eating into the moral fiber of the next generation. So uh, we have wokeness, Chinese Communist Party, Russia, and Islam, all holding hands and uh, undermining Western civilization. But we can't fight off these formidable forces unless we can answer the question, what is it that unites us? The response is that God is dead seems insufficient. So too does the attempt to find solace in the rules-based liberal international order. The only credible answer, I believe, lies in our desire to uphold the legacy of the Judeo-Christian tradition. And I do love how the Judeo thing has been added since the 1950s. So the legacy consists of an elaborate set of ideas and institutions designed to safeguard human life, freedom and dignity from the nation state and the rule of law to the institutions of science, health and learning. That sounds pretty woke to me, by the way. I don't know how that's against wokeness. The freedom of conscience and speech is perhaps the greatest benefit of Western civilization. It does not come naturally to man. It is the product of centuries of debate within Jewish and Christian communities. It was these debates that advanced science and reason, diminished cruelty, suppressed superstition, and built institutions to order and protect life, while guaranteeing freedom to as many as possible. Unlike Islam, Christianity outgrew its dogmatic stage. It became increasingly clear that Christ's teachings implied not only a circumscribed role for religion as something separate from politics, it also com implied compassion for the sinner and the humility for the believer. Yet I would not be truthful if I attributed my embrace of Christianity solely to the realization that atheism is too weak and divisive a doctrine to fortify us against our menacing foes. I have also turned to Christianity because I ultimately found life without any spiritual solace unendurable, indeed very near self-destructive. Atheism failed to answer a simple question, what is the meaning and purpose of life? This is why I no longer consider myself a Muslim apostate, but a lapsed atheist. Of course, I still have a great deal to learn about Christianity. I discover a little more at church each Sunday, but I have recognized in my own long journey through the wilderness of fear and self-doubt that there's a better way to manage the challenges of existence than either Islam or unbelief. The new atheist brain is just amazing to me. Like this person was saying, the West has reached some sort of enlightenment through Jews and Christians like debating scientific discoveries. Not that, especially in the medieval time, Islamic societies were better for a lot of this stuff than uh, Christian ones, which were actually like completely wrapped up in Christian superstition. But also, I just love how Judeo is thrown in there now. Not that Christians have been like literally the biggest tormentors of the Jews throughout their entire history. There is no group that has killed and done more damage to Jews than Christians throughout the last 2000 years, right? And now apparently they've been best buddies for centuries, just working all this stuff out and being more secular. Also what I do find funny is also this religious persecution actually pushed lots of Jewish communities into being more socialist as well. And you'll find loads of Jews across various socialist movements across the world because of this and because of how oppressive Catholic, the Catholic Church was in places like Spain, or the Orthodox Church was in places like Russia. So I do love this revisionist history, that it's always been Jews, Christians, best friends, and Islam, the big boogeyman. It's so incoherent, this worldview, that we have to stand up to the Chinese Communist Party and Putin's Russia, which aren't the same, wokeness, which is people like me, and also Islamicism. And this is why I call it woke fascism because they're coming after all of us. They see all of us as the equal enemy, despite the fact me and Islamists wouldn't agree on nearly everything. I hate Putin's Russia. I'm not a massive fan of communist China either, but to them, we're all like this axis of evil. It just feels like dumb history keeps repeating itself. And I do love the roundabout history of new atheism getting popular, pushing back against George Bush and the Christian right in America to only come full circle in that they literally are the exact same as the Christian right in America in the early 2000s, talking about the greatness of Western civilization and using that to justify all the terrible things we actually did to various different Muslim countries in this period. So Western civilization has been something that's been spoke about in this way, even in 1930s and 1940s Germany. They actually used to use this term as well. And it's always a dog whistle. And it's always just people trying to promote authoritarianism and fascism, because what are Western values? We can't agree on them. And there seems to be some notion that the whole of Europe and America, we all agree on Western values, despite the fact we're so polarized and divided, we don't agree. Look at our ruling party in the UK right now. 
all the transphobia, all the anti-Islam sentiment, all the intolerance and horrible shit they say all the time. Look at the Republican Party in America, openly fascist. I'm meant to have more in common with them than I am with poor refugees. I'm meant to agree with actual fascists running countries like the Netherlands and Italy are representative of Western democratic values. I meant to think that all of these countries arming Israel right now are representative of my Western values. I meant to think that. And Christianity is a wonderful part of those Western values that I should defend so much. Again, new atheism just completely rots your brain because there's no understanding of class, there's no understanding of economics, and there's no understanding of geopolitics. So now what you have is this full circle of new atheists who were some of the biggest critics of Christianity now coming full circle, promoting Christianity and the culture of Christianity, talking about it being decent, to demonize Muslims, because yes, the new atheist movement was always a very racist one, so they'll happily ally with anyone who actually hates Muslims as much as them. But anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and if you made it this far, thank you for watching.